uh, Tom Paine and the Spirit of True Democracy, an Invocation, by Ben Birch. Tom Paine, born January 29, 1737, died June 8, 1809, was an Englishman by birth, an American by adoption, and a Frenchman by decree. He is sadly the least honored of our founding fathers. Only six persons attended his simple funeral. Due to his embrace of deism and lifelong distrust of all hierarchical organized religions, no local church would allow his burial. His remains were interred under a walnut tree on a farm he owned in New Rochelle, New York. An English admirer later disinterred his remains in the hopes of a heroic reburial in Payne's native England, but he was never, never able to accomplish this. Tom Payne's bones disappeared from history after this man passed away in 1992. I'm sorry, after this man passed away. In 1992, the U.S. Congress passed a bill reserving land near the Capitol for a privately funded memorial to him. But the funds were never raised, and this too never came to pass. Yet this was a man whose fiery tract, Common Sense, is acknowledged as one of the main sources for popular support of the American Revolution. In terms of the percentage of the literate population who bought a copy, it still stands as the best-selling work in our history. John Adams, who grudgingly admitted Paine's contribution, nevertheless constantly attacked him and accused Paine of wishing for far too much democracy. <laughs> to Adams IV, Paine believed in a government that worked for the ordinary person, that regulated elite finance, and that made laws that promoted social and economic equality. For example, he is credited with being the first to propose an American national old age pension. Also, the state of Pennsylvania adopted a constitution using Paine's ideas in 1776, becoming one of the first governments to allow at least some of the property to vote. Loaded with elements of direct democracy, it also outlawed monopolies and debtor imprisonment and allowed for revocation of the charters of corrupt banks. A narrowly defeated article was even proposed that stated, an enormous proportion of property vested in a few individuals is dangerous to the rights and destructive of the common happiness of mankind. And therefore, every free state had a right by its laws to discourage the possession of such property. As the Occupy movement has clearly articulated many of the problems that concern Paine and, his, and the framers of the 1776 Pennsylvania Constitution are still with us today. However, it must be noted that this truly revolutionary Constitution was overturned in 1790 by frightened financial interests and their various conservative allies. It was largely dismissed in later years by mainstream historians as an unwise, radical experiment. Now, we can see why the narratives of the powers that be in this country have not been kind to the memory of Tom Paine. As a result, I sense a deep kinship between Paine's convictions and the ideals of the Occupy movement and their successors. They are certainly facing the same fear-driven attacks from the powers that be. And so, while John Adams Shade is probably muttering a horrified, good God, 
in response to these contemporary social movements, the ghost of Tom Paine will always be down there in the encampments, joining in the marches, blogging on the internet, and wherever else these movements may go, taking it all in happily, knowing that he has now a multitude of kindred spirits in this new age.